Alright, um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good afternoon. Selamat datang ke kelas. Okay, um, so pretty much um, sesi saya yeah. we still have tahanan kita dia, so kita tak ingat English. Ada pesan. Um, so what we doing is basically doing a little bit on tools about uh, macro credentials or movies about macro credentials, about ODL. Okay, and uh, what I've prepared here is already a notes that you can just take your phone, use your technology, use your tool, you can um, open this and then download the materials that I've prepared. Of course, these are not the only one, so this is not the only material. So inside the material, there's another, uh, a few more QR um, code links where you can download more materials. Okay, so it's like inception, material inside materials. Um, but nonetheless, we will go through a little bit. Um, okay, done, done. Before I switch slides. Okay. Alright, so. Okay, so the topic that I was given is Moodle and useful tools for ODL. So I'm pretty sure everybody has used Moodle before. Yes? Can I know who are um, ECR or early career researcher, less than five years in UM? Anyone? Okay, there's, there's a few, thank you. Okay, so uh, most of you have known Moodle uh, or the Spectrum platform that we have used throughout our semester. So what I'm going to talk about is basically looking a bit more detail, of course not in very detail, just a bit more detail on um, what are the other features, what are the tools that are already inside Moodle that you can use and on top of that I'm going to cover a little bit on what are some additional tools that you can use to help you to build your own uh, body classes. Okay, so pretty much this was covered by Prof. Andy. Um, we had, and, and pretty much these are the topics that is already written in POPA, POPA ODL. So if you have not looked at what POPA ODL is, you can simply just Google, um, go to Google, write down Copa ODL, and then type in MQA, then pretty much will be your first file. You can open it and then you can read um, all the details. But um, in related to my um, lecture, so to say, today are pretty much all these five things, okay? Um, where you can use your tools, um, right? Go back here. So, there are five categories that I would say um, tools will be very, very helpful in developing your sim. Okay? So, number one is in program development. So, if you download Copa, it will be on page 7, assessment and student learning, page 9, and so on and so forth. I'm not going to bore you by reading this. I'm just going to go very, very quickly um, and move to the tools. And perhaps if you have any questions, then I will answer it there. Okay? So these are all already been hidden actually, but it's fine, I'm going to skip. Alright, so under UCT Malaya, we are using the Moodle for all this platform. So we have our Spectrum, we have Spectrum Exam, we have Atrium, and also if you are developing ODL. So ODL is part of um, our Moodle technologies. And if you actually notice, if you go into one of these platforms, uh, from one platform to another, you can see there are slight variations, right? So what, and, and that what we are doing now is we are trying to transition from a standalone Moodle. So one Moodle has X version, another Moodle has a different version. What we are trying to do now um, with GTM is to make sure that every single Moodle has the same version and has the same UI view. So that regardless of whether you are doing Moodle or you are doing your traditional course or Spectrum, it will be similar. It will be different and therefore it will be difficult for you to really understand and, and use the features. Okay, so under Moodle, we have all these features already embedded. Okay, so we have a database, we have page, assignment, lesson, workshop, forum, glossary, chat, weekly, survey, um, forum, each five choice, and quiz. So these are all the, the, I would normally call them as um, modules inside a Moodle. Okay. And some of you might have used some of them, but I'm pretty sure none of you have used all of them. 
Have anyone used all of them? No. Okay. So even myself, I have not used all of them. But I have looked through all of them. But um, again, these are the things that is available that are already there in Moodle that you can explore and then that you might want to integrate um, in your ODL courses depending on um, what type of courses they are. Okay. So, um, like for example, a database might not be useful for a chemist like me, but it might be useful for those who are doing computer engineering. Okay, where you might have a certain database that you want to share with your students, instead of just telling them, go to GitHub and then do this and that, um, you might want to create your own database with your own codes inside Moodle. You can, uh, you can do that. Okay? Pages is also more or less the same, it's just a simple information where um, you, you can either make it into a storyline if you want, or you can just make it a standalone page. Um, assignment, I'm sure everybody has used assignment before, where you can um, create an assignment portfolio where students actually engage and submit their assignment in there. Surveys, either use surveys inside Moodle, or perhaps you have used Google Form or Microsoft Forms uh, previously. Um, Scorum is basically um, an API where if you have used a certain software, for example, mathematics, um, and you want to integrate that particular software inside Moodle, you can, but if you want to do this, it will be a bit more complex and um, definitely there will be a lot of uh, learning process. Page 5P is, I would say, one of the features that would be very, very useful in your ODL. Why? Because normally when, um, during COVID, so remember when everybody is just doing everything online, or perhaps some of you um, recorded all your videos and then post it on YouTube and then post a link on your spectrum. Right? So that might be one of the ways where you actually do it. Um, that's the easiest, of course. But for ODL, because you need the engagement with the students, okay? so H5E is actually a, a mod a module inside Moodle where you can already integrate a lot of engagement. Like say for example, um, your lecture is say 60 minutes or 50 minutes, right? So what you can integrate in here are actually questions, for example, or extra videos, extra materials embedded inside the video. So instead of asking a student, oh, for the first five minutes, you do this. And then next five minutes, you open Moodle, or you open Spectrum, you go into this particular section, you open this, you open that, and that, and that, and that, and then the student will see the material. Instead of doing that, what you can do is you can integrate everything inside your video. So one single video, you can integrate everything. So um, if some of you have used Edpuzzle previously, so it's more or less like Edpuzzle, but this one is integrated into our, our own system, and therefore we can control everything uh, on our own end. Okay, so um, of course quiz is also one of the main features in Moodle that I'm sure everybody have used. Um, wiki chat choices, not so much. Um, and forum, if you recall what uh, Prof. Andy mentioned, where you need to have an engagement with your students. So forum is one of the ways by which you can have an online engagement um, asynchronous, asynchronously with your students. Okay. However, in Moodle, there is also this chat feature. Okay, so where the student can actually, you know, it, it, it's like when you open Facebook and then you can just swipe to the right and then you can chat with all your buddies, right? So similarly, um, on ODL Moodle, we can act, you can actually do that if you decide to um, turn, turn it on. Otherwise, just use Spectrum, um, just use Forum. And then perhaps you can just put a link uh, to a WhatsApp group that you've created for that particular course. So it's up to you on how you want to do it. Um, here at EDEC, what we are trying to do is helping you and to do the best. And as Prof. Andy mentioned, uh, we need to have a policy to make sure that everything, all the programs, all the courses inside UM is more um, synchronous and not standalone and having their own setup and whatnot. Okay, um, all right, so basic feature for Moodle, hopefully everybody knows this, so you can take an attendance if you need to, um, you can actually use block or HTML, so this one has various options, 
Okay, you can use forum and announcement, um, as I mentioned previously, as a platform for you to teach or to talk to your students. You have um, the option to do chat or to do live communication synchronous or asynchronously with your students. You have the assessment platform where underneath here you have the assessment, you have quiz, and I can't remember what's the other one. Okay, and then you have learning materials where you can put all the learning materials, whether simply just you know take whatever you have, your PDF, put it in, or your uh, PowerPoint, put it in, or you can actually use different tools like um, database over here we have lessons we have page wiki glossary database and whatnot okay and of course the most important thing that most of you might have not used is this backup and restore so why do i put this one in is say for example uh, what you currently have is a course that you're offering uh, as a conventional uh, manner okay but now there's um, Wahyu from Langit to ask you to translate from this traditional to an ODL course. So instead of duplicating everything again every single time, what you can also do is use this backup and restore feature from your Moodle, from Spectrum. You export all the courses and then paste it on your uh, ODL platform. Okay, so that you can work on already created a little bit so it's not 100% complete and of course then there are internal QAs where we might say um, instead of doing this and this and this you might want to change it into a different manner where it might be more engaging to the students um, instead of you know just a blank um, spectrum page with all the notes okay um, and of course I'm just telling you now about this but I'm not going to show it to you why because if you look at um, if you have downloaded the material at this particular page later on, there are additional resources where I've actually talked about that, about the feature in Spectrum, and it will be easier for you to, you know, because now you don't have any computers or PCs to actually do it. Um, my session is more on hands-on, so instead of being hands-on, what I'm trying to do now is to just give you all the information that you need, and it's up to you whether you want to learn uh, and explore. Okay, so this is how the ODL platform will look like in general. Okay, so you have uh, more or less the same UI as Spectrum, um, where you have a menu on the left hand side, and what I'm showing over here is um, Prof. Andy also mentioned just now that you need to have a policy on how to do this and that. So at that we already did that and is already available on the ODM platform. Okay, so if you have access to the ODM platform, you can you watch this video? And it actually shows you all the examples that um, you can do. And these are a good example and, and what we use for all your courses. Okay, um, I know some of you guys have already developed all your uh, courses, uh, but this is just an example for those who have not developed a course that what you comes in. Um, and then you need to do it. Okay. All right. So these are the additional materials. So basic over here is Spectrum Basic. So going into detail on the basics of Spectrum, and then we have intermediate here where I go into a bit more detail on what you can do on Spectrum. And these resources are pretty much linked to our YouTube because a lot of features in Spectrum we already covered that. Okay. And then we've already covered a lot of things. So instead of me standing here and then you know talking about the feature one by one, showing to you guys while you guys don't have any laptops and whatnot, it's better for you for me to give you all these resources so that you can go back to your faculty and then tell your decans and, and the person who are actually building the ODL uh, programs and courses to actually look at what we have and then try and adapt to your own courses. Okay. So if you have any other issues, of course, uh, we at EDAC, we always welcome you to communicate with us uh, via our email or you can contact me personally um, or Dr. Azar and our IDs. I'm almost finished. Alright, so um, this is an example um, about one of the big feature that when I talk to most lecturers, most of them did not know about this. Okay, and this 
is what we call as a um, great book. Okay, so this is a great book. So what the great book does is pretty much um, summarize all your contents that has marks for the students. Okay, so it will cover it over here. So say for example for your ODL, you have four tutorials and then all the tutorials you want the students to submit it online via um, our platform. Of course if you use Google uh, Forms or um, Microsoft Forms then you don't have this. But if you use um, the great book feature inside Moodle, sorry, embedded in Moodle, so you can actually see tutorial one, and then if you click on this, you will see a list, the name list of the student and how much they actually get. Okay, so these are all the features, um, and why I'm showing this because um, instead, like Prof. Andy, he already knows about this feature, he already gave a lot of talks. In my case, I developed these slides. I just finished yesterday evening, and it is based on the questionnaires that I um, that I'm not sure whether it's you guys or some of the lecturers you have uh, give to edit. And this is uh, this slide pretty much kind of like um, telling you guys where to get the resources from. Okay, so um, that's it about Moodle Spectrum. Any question? No. That's what I expected. So that's why I'm going. Yes, it's a deal. This this two? Let's say Kahoot. Okay. Um there are multiple ways by which you can do it. Okay, so this is the ODL platform once you log again. You will see your courses. Okay. And this is the course overview that what you will see once you have been um, allocated for a course. Um, if you want to see how to actually build your course, you can go to the left hand side, home side, and then this is where you will see all the courses that are being um, offered currently. Scroll down and you will see UM ODR training. And this ODR training for educators is the, the go to place, okay? Or the, Policy guide as um, perfect dimension. All right. So once you have access, then you can do this. But for now, I'm just gonna showcase, show this to you guys just a little bit. We are recording this, so you can do the recording later. Um, all right. So turn on editing. As usual, if you want to edit anything, turn on editing. And the question is, for example, if you want to uh, put in Kahoot. Okay, so add an activity or resource, and then the easiest is to add in HTML. URL will go outside. Okay, you don't want it to go outside. You want it to stay inside your platform. So of course you can do it on H5P. When save uh, H5P, you cannot embed external um, program like Kahoot. But if you want to embed it in here, okay, so you read, you open. Uh, okay, so this is HTML code editor. So what you do is um, copy the link from the Kahoot, you can paste it in. Okay, so it's not limited just to Kahoot, so pretty much any uh, web, web 2.0 tools that allows embedding. So you can actually use this tool, you can embed it so that the student will just straight away see um, and interact directly with the content. Okay, so it's not limited to just um, Kahoot. So this is just an example. Like you just said. Any other question? Or say for example, um, the normal tools that I use for my own courses is say for example, instead of using um, the forum feature or the chat feature inside ODL, and you want to use something that is more handy or more mobile to you, which is WhatsApp. If you want to put in WhatsApp inside here, instead of having like a one link about WhatsApp, what you can use is you can use the um, block feature. Okay, so this block feature is pretty much, if you open the spectrum now, uh, of course not on your mobile because you can see it. If you open it on your PC, normally you will see 
uh, there's three sections for um, spectrum. We have normally menu on the left hand side, your content in the middle, and then on the right hand side, normally you will see another panel. Okay, and the panel normally, uh, I think it's set to our blended learning. Okay, your participants for your courses. Um, what else? Some has blenders in it. So what you can do is, so those blocks on the right hand side, is what we call as this block and it is also part of html block so what this can do is pretty much you can add in all web component that uses html you can just copy and paste the code put it in there and then the student can access or you can put in like what i'm doing is to translate your whatsapp group link into a qr code and then you put your qr code inside here so that the student will just view a qr code so they can just take your mobile, scan it, and they will be in, into um, your WhatsApp group. Okay, so that's one way for you to use technology to kind of like streamline all the entry process for the students. Okay, so move forward, move forward just a little bit more. Okay, so external tools. Um, this is the fun bit, check GPT and file. So, um, <laughs> Anyone know about cloud? Anyone know about what is cloud? C L A U D. No. Uh, Chat GPT. Anyone use Chat GPT? Anyone not use Chat GPT? Instead of using, we will ask anyone who not use. Anyone pay for Chat GPT? No. Okay, I have a few. Okay. So uh, for those who are paying for Chat GPT, you can now desubscribe and then use this. Cloud 2 is a better AI than ChatGPT. Okay, so this is just one exposure. If you have not used Cloud 2, um, you can skip ChatGPT, move to Cloud 2. It is a better AI for now um, until either ChatGPT goes back and take over the throne. Um, so far, Cloud is better. Okay, for a general term. So, how does ChatGPT uh, or Cloud can help in building your assessment? And previously, someone asked, how do you uh, make sure that the assessment is the student's assessment? The student is doing it instead of AI. So what you can do, um, it's actually best if I actually have a laptop to do it, but unfortunately, I don't have a laptop. Um, so I need to go back and forth. So what you can do with ChatGPT is actually ask ChatGPT to create a question based on your CLO. That's one example. So it gives ChatGPT uh, create a question about this and this, I want it to be an open book format and it should cover a CLO of one, uh, which, whichever it is. Okay? And then ChatGPT will give you a set of questions. It depends on how you actually interact with, with ChatGPT. So it's basically, uh, in my case, ChatGPT is my assistant. So a lot of things about education, I ask ChatGPT to do it for me. So what my task is to verify the information that ChatGPT does and then make sure it's actually um, linked to what I'm teaching the students and it is actually real because ChatGPT is known to be, uh, to be a little bit hallucinate so it creates something which is not real okay? so this is our task as an educator use that tool okay? so um, if you don't allow your students to use ChatGPT ask them to use it like what Prof. Andy mentioned um, ask the student to use ChatGPT and then comment on the content right? so what I'm doing for my student currently uh, for undergraduate especially, is to create a set of students, a set of questions. Uh, for example, MCQ question, ask ChatGPT to create 10 set of questions, give 5 options, and then tell me which one is the correct answer. Okay, and then the set of questions must um, cover a certain topic. So I will tell it, topic number one is about organic synthesis or something, something, and then this and that. So what ChatGPT will do is list down 10 questions, it will give out all 5 options and then it will tell you question number 1, the answer is E, for example. Okay, so my task then is to look at the question and then number 1, see whether the questions are actually to my student's standard. Because of course, if you ask ChatGPT, it can be a different standard. It can be too easy or it can be too difficult or it can be non-existent, which is hallucination. Okay, so you look at the question Look at the answer and verify. If you would like ChatGPT to, uh, to change the question, you can ask it to change the question. Okay? 
So this is one way to do it uh, for assessment to ask the AI to create a question for you. So this is to make sure that um, the work that you are doing is easier. That's number one. And number two, since all of us already have our own questions, data bank somewhere, either in Word document or in uh, Moodle uh, question bank and whatnot, what you can also do is take the question, give it into ChatGPT, and ask it to create another set of questions. Okay, so like, Prof. Andy also mentioned to try and avoid students from cheating and whatnot. One way is to have a question bank. If your question bank is only 20 questions, ask ChatGPT to create another 20 or even 80 set of questions. So now we have a bigger data bank, a question bank. Okay, so um, that is for assessment. And just talking about this can, can take a lot of time. Um, and not only for um, multiple choice question. ChatGPT can also help you in creating an open-ended question. It can help you mark the question, and then it can help you give uh, marks for each um, answer from students. Okay, so th these are all the features of AI that you can actually use, uh, but you need to explore on how to actually do it properly, and then so that the student will not detect that you are actually using it. That is the most important. Okay, uh, but of course, don't use it to for publication, that is um, not good. Okay, and of course, you have quizzes, um, Socrative, Google uh, Form, or Microsoft Form, as part of the tools that we have used for assessment for so long. And then you have also um, Answer Garden. So these are all Web 2.0. Um, of course, these, is not, these are not limited to this. So you might have used a different tool, but these are the tools that I can quickly just extract out and then uh, put this in. Okay. So in terms of communication, other than the tools that is already inside um, Moodle, so you can also add in tweet break. So this is one of other tools. If you, once you have registered as an educator for ODL, you can actually go into the ODL for educators, and then you can actually see um, Dr. Zahir who created the education tools. He actually used this as an example of a communication tool for ODL. So you can use the same thing, or you can use as usual. In my case, I like to use WhatsApp. Everything is about WhatsApp. It'll be easier. So they have one tool for everything. Um, so you can use a WhatsApp, or if you like to use something else, then if I guess you can always use that. And um, all these technologies nowadays they have web version, and from that web version you can always integrate it as HTML into your ODL. Okay. In terms of feedback. Um, as usual, Google and Microsoft Forms are the two get to go um, feedback platform. You have poll everywhere. I actually wanted to showcase this, but uh, this is more for a live session, for a tutorial, for example, it is very useful. Uh, especially if your students are not engaging or your students are sleepy, this is a get to go to that I normally use so that your students can still hold their phone instead of you know just looking down and then close their eyes. They can actually play with their phone and then answer this. So this is more an engaging tool. And then click read. Maybe some of you guys have used it, some of you have not. And there are other tools that you can explore as well. For lessons, we have HTML, uh, H5P. Um, it stands for HTML5. Here you can go for what. Um, but you can, what it does is it's not a standalone tool uh, where you create your lecture materials or learning materials, but rather it is in combination with um, other resources. For example, other videos that you have um, from YouTube or from Microsoft Streams or from any other videos available online. What you can do is you can integrate the video into your H5P module inside Spectrum or inside Moodle and then do your editing inside there. Okay? There are so many things about H5P. Um, if you look at the resources, that um, I've shared with you one of the QR code just now. I talked about one and a half hours about H5P alone. Okay? And then even then, it doesn't cover all, every single um, units inside H5P. So there are tons of things that you can do. So what is needed is basically, one is for you to know that you can use that tool. Number two is for you to actually explore that tool. Okay? Um, at Puzzle, uh, more or less the same as H5P. However, um, add puzzle for this 
last semester we managed to get it for free. Um, next semester I'm not quite sure yet how uh, we're going to deal with that puzzle after this. But uh, what it does is pretty much more or less the same as H5P. So if you if you are accustomed to Ad Puzzle, and um, for this semester you are using Ad Puzzle as a free version, you can actually switch to H5P, which is already free um, in our system. Okay. You can use also that app, that education, draw IO to draw some flow, uh, pixels to get pictures, chat GPT and cloud again to create your lesson, lesson plan for example, and of course um, can go to get a lot of other materials and creating match notes. Okay, so these are some other AI as well. Again, um, it's for you to explore. But so um, you have been your policy. We don't have an exact policy yet. Uh, we have a guide, um, guideline on ethical use of AI. So I think it will be distributed to everyone soon because we went through the uh, PPID two weeks ago for approval. Okay, so we already have an ethical guideline on how to do it to to uh, you know teach students a little bit on how to use AI. But let me be frank um, about AI. So there's no point to actually use the AI. There's no point to actually use AI detector because for students who are clever, they can always bypass those technologies. So it, it's up to us um, as educator on how to actually change the format of teaching. It's like um, sorry, Anna. It's like what Prof. Andy mentioned. Instead of giving a task to the student. You ask students to actually use the technology, use the tool, and then verify on the content from the tool. I think that would be best instead of you know playing cat and mouse between detecting AI and not. Um, instead of using, I'm not sure whether you am will because turn in turn in it is requesting about extra fifty k for that for just that particular teacher. So I'm not sure what um, our BC and DMC will decide on that, but um, so far, my stand is if you are giving students an essay, what you can do is just randomly select uh, part of the essay that the student write, and then use a free AI detection tool that is already available online. So you can just Google, there's, there's multiple tools that can detect, for example, GPT-0, um, you have AI writer detector, you have uh, there's just quite a few tools. So you can just randomly use the tools, but um, like Prof. Andy said, it's, it's very difficult. Once you go into an online field, you pretty much um, need to just teach your students to be ethical. Um, but that's, that's the only thing I can do. Uh, I know you are saying Just the language of AI, I think here. Uh, for the students, when they find the text plagiarism, when they submit their. Because sometimes I found 70% of using AI. So, so, so in the um, guidelines that we de developed, um, we were suggesting um, PTJs to. Um, the maximum is 30%. So, that is our suggestion. So it's up to the PTJ and to decide whether you want to use 30% as the benchmark because AI detection tools are not perfect as well. So I've written a paragraph, put it in, and then it says 1% AI, but I've written everything. Okay, So it's a good tool, but you should not um, trust it 100%. If it's 70%, then yes, definitely. No. Yeah. So it will be okay just for the, the lecturers, not for the students. Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm not sure whether turning in will change the program because like uh, the similarity percentage, it's up to us to allow whether the student will see or not. So maybe at one point you you will have that particular settings for AI detection as well. So that one I'm I'm not really sure how um turn in will do it. But uh, nonetheless AI is very difficult, it's disturbing a lot of things. Um, 
we need to adapt as best as we can. That's the only thing that I can say. Okay, so these are some of the AI tools that might help you in uh, creating your course content. Uh, video, for example, Super Creator, Starburst, Wintraw, and there are some other AIs where you can actually take a screenshot of yourself and then ask the AI to create a virtual reality of you and then uh, use a different AI to convert your own voice uh, into an AI so that you can write the text and then the AI will read your script and then you have one AI to read the script using your voice one AI to mimic your appearance and then whatever you are talking um, and then you can use Adobe um, tools for example to combine all these two together now you can have 100% AI based material okay? so that is one example um, and then images, you can, um, if you have used Midjourney or Dalby, there are multiple tools um, by which they can help you to create your own materials. Okay. Text, ChatGPT, Notion, uh, design, audio, and whatnot. So um, there are some which I took out, which is not related to um, education, but nonetheless, there are multiple tools uh, that you can use. Okay, so the feedback that I receive is if the lecture space is on the screen, then it will be better. Okay, so you can use AI tool, but the AI tool that I mentioned is actually an AI that transforms you into a virtual you. Yeah, yeah. I guess that my face like a virtual you. Yes, so if <laughs> you have that, then. Which one? You can have it. That, that's a tough one. Yeah. Um, but as long as the AI face is close to your real face, then I would say it's okay. Yeah. Um, because, because it will be easier to use if you have an AI that can represent you so that you don't have to record every single thing again and again. Um, so the tools are there, use it uh, to your advantage. Okay. All right. So my last few slides are about the pre-submitted question. So number one, how do you design ODL courses to leverage technology effectively? So my answer is create courses by leveraging on multiple technologies. Okay. Again, depending on your PLO, your C CLO, depending on the content, depending on what PPG you are. If you are in engineering, you don't simply just use ChatGPT for all your courses, right? So you need to uh, combine with the video, for example, or AR or VR to showcase a certain model of, say, engines or uh, factories. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, use it, okay? But any tools that you use, always be mindful of um, intellectual properties. Okay, because so some AI, they actually declare that the AI are the, all the uh, materials that are being designed are theirs. Okay, so some say they don't care. So again, it's, it's up to you and, and now even I think worldwide, there are a little bit of arguments between whether the output from the AI belongs to the creator, um, the person who actually put in the questions, or the AI itself, or the company, or the um, artist who originally drawn the particular image that the AI actually adapts. So there's, there's a lot of um, arguments now. Okay, so um, you can also use AI to ask questions. Oh, by the way, talking about AI, do you guys know that you have actually adapted AI? They call it UMI, UMAI. If you open your um, UM app, there's actually a UMAI over there, um, so it's actually an AI based technology as well. Okay, so question number two, how can instruction provide effective support for the students who might face unique challenges? Um, so for me, for now, just use AI, but of course, this is an avenue where everyone can explore. Um, some of the challenges, say for example, for those who are, have uh, vision difficulties. 
uh, our ODL platform also offers uh, also offer what's down here. That one, that one. Okay, so it offers uh, accessibility settings. So if say for example based on your experience we have taught students with some uh, difficulties, please let us know so that hopefully we can explore and add in more features uh, for our model to cater a wider audience. Okay. Okay, so um, number three, any tips on how instructors maintain an optimal level of monitoring of the learning process of ODL students? So this is why Gradebook is important. So I've shown you guys Gradebook previously. Um, this is because this is where you can actually monitor students' progress. Okay, so at least in our own system for now. Number four, bagaimana nak track um, progress student and letak instruction? So track Gradebook, letak restriction, um, see next slide. Okay, so this is how you can, okay, restriction, right? So say for example, if you want to do a restriction uh, from week two, so a student needs to complete everything from week one before they can actually proceed with week two. So what you can do is um, create your contents, all your contents first, and then say for example, under week two, you can see down here, I will put a restriction, okay? Um, this is just an example. Okay, so this is just an example where you can actually do this for all materials inside, not just your ODL, but um, also for your spectrum. Okay, so I put it in, please view with my lecture and materials, then submit the assignment using the link provided. So the link provided um, under week 2. So what you can do is underneath here, there's a restrict access. Okay. So if you click on that, you can add this access and then activity completion. So um, students who have completed a certain activity that you set, then they can proceed to the next stage. Okay, so this is just an example. Again, you can just explore um, underneath all the settings for each uh, module inside Spectrum. There is this restriction. Okay, a few more questions before we finish. Number five, bagaimana nak letak rubric assignment for grading assignment? Okay, so I've looked into it. Um, the issue that currently we have is on the ODL platform, you can put rubric, but you, I don't have a means to actually access the rubric. While on Spectrum, um, you can add rubric, but there's no pre-installed rubric. So I will need to re-look into it and then perhaps um, inform everybody later on. Number six, is there any live conference video feature in Moodle for a synchronous session? The answer is no. Um, number seven, activity or resource yang nak go through lebih in depth adalah assignment forum folder label H5P content material. So the answer is I don't have time to actually go into very deep for each one of these. Um, H5P, uh, we already, and at that we already did a video on that. So you can view the video if you are interested in looking at what H5P can do. Uh, label is very easy, it's just labeling, it doesn't do anything. Folder is like a folder inside your PC or Mac where you have a folder, put in a name, and then you jump in, uh, you, you lump up so all your files inside that. Okay. Forum is where you can have um, a forum discussion or you can use forum as an announcement for your students registered in that particular course. Um, assignment is, uh, I mean, you can also view our other resources that we've covered for assignments by the lines. Okay, I think that is all. So H5P again, um, these are short notes and the recorded related to H5P if you are interested. And that's all from me. Um, thank you.